Hey, welcome back to my channel. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs, and vlogs. Thank you for tuning in. Whoops. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Today, I'm just going to do some nice and relaxing loose florals. It's late. Just want like a nice chill session. Um, let me show you what I'm going to be doing. I also want to kind of talk a bit through my process of when I do loose florals. I do appreciate that last time that I did it, um, I didn't really say anything. I just <laughs> went ahead and painted. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Let me show you what I'll be using. Hey, Miss Barnabas. Yes, you're completely correct. I should be in bed. <laughs> but I, I'll go to bed once this is done. I feel like I'll be in a better, more relaxed state to actually sleep. In terms of what I'm using, I've got the Claire Fontaine watercolour paper that I bought previously. And this paper is cold pressed and has quite a lot of tooth to it. It's not quite rough, but I can almost see... I don't know how to explain it it's like quite a uniform quite a uniform pattern on the paper so I wasn't sure about it and I thought this would be a good opportunity to just experiment with it more and then over here I have my Roman Schmall palette which I have swatched out for you guys already and these are the beautiful colors that I bought and I bought all these separately and then added them to this palette and then for my brush, I'll be using the Princeton Aqua Elite round size 12 brush. And cool. So my florals tend to be one of two things usually either roses or peonies like I really like them so I'm going to start with that first off I don't usually plan which is what makes it harder to teach and talk through but let me start off with a rose so roses quite often are just shapes of seas and I very much like using the shape of my brush to just get organic shapes. Hey Mata Kitty, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. How is everyone this evening, afternoon, night, <laughs> depending on whereabouts in the globe you are? Thank you both for joining. As I get further and further out, the seas just get bigger and I add more and more water to make it nice and loose. And I hope, I may occlude my face a little bit, but just so that you guys can get a bit of a better view. Ooh. And this is natural sienna. I want to add that on some Just mix that with some cornacridone gold because I want like a nice rich colour and I'll do another rose. Hey Mary Louise from Hastings, so it's as late for you <laughs> as it is for me. I'm sorry for the time. I was I was going to go to bed, but I honestly like really missed live streaming or more so like I was going to paint and watch crime dramas as is um the usual but then I was like you know what I haven't live streamed in a while this would be a wonderful opportunity to do so hello Helen <laughs> welcome I know I'm actually a night owl like every day I'm like oh you know what I'm not gonna do this again I'm gonna go to bed earlier and every night uh, something comes up but tomorrow <laughs> tomorrow hopefully I'll go to bed earlier it's 
it's a hard pattern because despite staying up late, I still have to get up early in the morning and I'm not a morning person. So I'm just doing roses. <laughs> Why are you up, Marie-Louise? Making this a little bit more orange. I must say, I do though um, admire like early birds. I just feel like if I was an early bird, I'd be more productive, <laughs> get more stuff done, be awake with the rest of the world. <laughs> I was out and about um, in London today. I'm going to share it in a video very soon. Um, so I actually didn't get to take a nap. And most of the time I'm at work. But if not, yes, I'm very much like into napping. <laughs> and just want to make this nice and even. It feels so odd because this is much, um, okay, I say much, it's slightly larger than I am used to, but I feel like with live streams, if I work in A5, you can't really see what I'm doing. So I thought it would just be better to do it this way. So these are all roses, basically different forms. The bigger they are, the more open they are, the kind of older they are, the smaller ones are like little blossoms, if you like. Try to not make everything symmetrical. If if it happens, it's not intentional. <laughs> and I quite often try to undo it. And just put in some leaves. Again, just using the shape of the brush. And what I mean by that is I press down so the belly goes down. To do the fine stems, I just use the tip of the brush. And then press down again. And I get the brush shape. And if I want to adjust it a little bit, I use the tip. Oh, London heatwave, as you can tell. <laughs> I am not equipped for any heat in the UK. And that's because most of the time it's, it's not hot or it's not hot for long. So I always feel like, oh, it's not worth buying a fan. Certainly like no AC. But it means that when the heat comes around, it's very, very challenging. <laughs> Um, I kind of chose this um, softer colour palette because I wasn't sure if I would be able to do it with the Roman Schmoll. I know it doesn't necessarily make sense, but I kind of tend to lean towards my pinks. I love using pinks in my floral paintings, but I only really have the permanent, eliz permanent alizarin crimson. And most of my Roman Schmoll, I noticed, were like blues and moody. So I wanted to know, like, okay, can I use this palette in a bit of a more versatile way? The answer is yes. <laughs> oh, that sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> I haven't been, to be honest, I haven't been painting in, I haven't painted in a while. Um, just been busy. Which which isn't um, the best excuse, but it's true. And I think one of the things that I loved about live streams is that I feel like, okay, it's legit for me to dedicate time to paint because I'm doing it with you. <laughs> mm. 
Oh, that's clever. So let me see. I think I need something a little bit darker. I also, it would be remiss, I don't know if you guys have noticed or seen, um, I've recently started a Kofi, which is quite similar to a Patreon. And I thought that this would be a good opportunity to answer, to well, talk about it first and then answer any questions that anyone may have about it. Because I know most people are used to Patreon. So this sounds a little bit random. And the reason that I picked Kofi over Patreon <laughs> was uh, twofold. I'm not going to lie. It came down to money um, in part, as well as like the functionality of it. So why money? Primarily because um, Patreon takes higher fees. Um, and then I was kind of like trying to figure out one of the rewards I wanted um, was like exclusive videos. And then, I don't know, it looked like I'd have to get charged extra if I wanted to upload videos of a certain length. And then it's 12%. And then PayPal takes, like, I think 7.9%. And by the time that you added it all up, quite um, quite a significant amount of it went to the platform as opposed to me, um, which basically means less would actually go to what I want it to go to. And that's back into YouTube. <laughs> um, So I looked into it and I quite like it. I also like the fact that it has a shop on there. And so I can also like put free things a bit more easily. Um, I have an Etsy at the moment, which is okay, but it's not really set up for giving anything for free, which I guess makes sense. <laughs> That's not the purpose of it. So quite often if I want to do that, I then have to like add links and everything. So it's a little bit clunky. Whereas this way you literally can, you have more options. Then in terms of the things that I want or why I kind of created it, I've had it and it's so, should I bring it out? I have like, I wanted to create a vision board at the beginning of the year, um, back when my printer was almost working. And part of that vision board had like a group of artist friends painting together and I wanted it to be and then it had like a computer and then a box and um colors and it was just basically alluding to the fact that I would like to be able to paint with people to build a community and I feel like YouTube has been so massively advantageous in doing that but then sometimes unless I have things like this um YouTube can be quite one-sided in that you can't really talk back to me <laughs> so I decided to build this and I have quite big plans for it but let's start I guess small and starting small it's with art challenges with building a community on discord with videos with updates that I don't necessarily want like all of YouTube to know. <laughs> and taking it from there. I will put the link in the description. And If anyone is interested, they can check it out. It also has a tip feature. So I know in theory, some people may not want to necessarily join this vision that I have. <laughs> um, but even if you don't and you say want to support the channel, then, you know, there's a tip jar there. But if not, you are more than welcome to join. And the plan is eventually that I'll do like, I'll finally get to do my Zoom parties <laughs> and get to chat with you guys properly. What do we think? I think this is done. 
part of me wants to keep going. The other part of me is like, stop. Does anyone have any questions about Kofi? It's okay if you don't, but if you do, I figured this would be a good opportunity to answer them. Ooh. <laughs> Thank you. What greens did I use? I am using Hooker's Green, which to me looks like a sap green, but it's um, Remish Mall Hooker's Green, which is PY150 and PB27. And that's pretty much it. But then I added in some Shadow Violet, which is PG50, PB29, and PB19. So let me, I can swatch out the colors that I used. So I used that. I then used Thank you. And then used this. And then hookers green. And then hookers green and shadow violet. Thank you. Can you see? So this is permanent alizarin crimson. Then this. The third one is quinacridone gold hue. Let me put that a little bit lower. And this one here is a mixture of the two. And then this is hooker's green. And this is hooker's green with shadow violet. I'll write that down so that I remember. And it's all Roman. Small. And then this here is quinacridone. Gold hue. And this is hooker's green. And this is hooker's green. And shadow violet. Ta-da. Thank you. Yeah, it's stunning. It's quite warm. Initially, when I was trying to mix that, like, because I was trying to mix like a peachish colour, I thought that maybe a bit a bit too warm, but it actually worked out quite nice. Thank you. I don't normally like make notes for myself, but it's something that I'm like, oh, I should do more more of that because sometimes I'll look back on something and be like, oh, that's a beautiful color. How did I make it? Where did it come from? <laughs> what palette did I use? I have no idea. It's just all random. And also I don't normally take note of what colors I'm mixing together or anything. It's just all quite intuitive. 
<clears throat> which is good on one hand, but then on the other hand, I just want to be a little bit more mindful of what I'm doing so that I can replicate it if I want to. So that's roses. For peonies, let's see. Start off with that shape. So I start off with the front of the peony, then the side of the peony, the other side, and then these little shapes represent the back. Thinner side again, thinner side again, and then the front that are coming towards us. Again, trying to be loose with it. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's. I really do feel something I should have probably been doing for a while. But I do think it's a good. Um, it's a good thing to do. Just taking note of the colors and, especially colors that I think you like, and color palettes that you think that work well for you. Just adding extra lines to represent petals because I like being quite loose with it. And what do I want to add? Should we add some mineral violet? I want to make it dark and moody. And then another peony. So like a teardrop shape and then sides. Making this a little bit more open, but still small. Dots at the top to just represent the petals at the back. Then C shapes on the side to represent the ones at the side. And some at the front. Mineral violets, beautiful. <laughs> so, so beautiful. I've been using the colours primarily like as they are without mixing them. So I thought that maybe now would be a nice time to try and mix them a little bit more. Just adding a little bit of water to the edges to try and see if I can make it a little bit looser. And I should say this isn't a tutorial, it's just in case anyone was wondering why I do things the way I do or how I'm doing things. It makes it a little bit more helpful. And I think I'll use one with mineral violet on its own so that we can see it. Um, and it's through, look at that. It's such a beautiful colour. You know I love purples, <laughs> so I'm a little bit biased, but still. Has anyone got any nice plans for the weekend? Art related or otherwise? Ooh. You can see like hints of purple, hints of blue, hints of red. This colour is stunning. That's the thing. I like it on its own. I don't really tend to like it as much when I mix it. That's more of like a note to self. Ooh. 
This isn't balanced. Let's see. Let's add some. This time, adding Payne's Grey to the hooker's green. Oh, also, I have a question for you guys. Um, what do you do with your old art? <laughs> I'm going to move soon, and I'm just looking at pieces, like, you know, practice pieces, loose sheets, just everything. And you know when you just have so much to carry? It's leaving me feeling a bit stuck. I do have... I used to have, like, art from when I was younger that I think um, kind of got thrown away in a move that I kind of regret it being thrown away I was looking for it um a few years ago and I couldn't find it so part of me is like keep everything and the other part of me is like I don't have the space to do that <laughs> so I don't know if this is just a, a thing that's come to mind because I'm moving and if I wasn't I would keep everything which I think is probably the case but I don't yeah I don't know and I think the sketchbooks is fine you know you can carry sketchbooks it's more like you know um, some canvases uh, loose sheets like I have a whole box full of loose paintings which I, I like most of which I really really like <laughs> oh this sounds lovely <laughs> oh should I hide that does she watch me I don't know <laughs> let me hide that for a second <laughs> but I think that's I think that's really sweet Galeen my mum did a painting for me, actually, for um, my birthday last year, and I kept it. I absolutely love it. Um, ah, you see, you throw it away. That's the thing. Part of me feels like, oh, maybe I should. I consider, like, doing the Mary Kondo method for, for things. <laughs> Not necessarily, like, my art, but just everything. But then, yeah, it still posed the the question of what to do with art because part of me is like oh if I keep it then I'll be able to look at it in 10 years time and be like look where I was 10 years ago and look where I am now but then the other part of me is like mm, do I need do I need to do that consider taking pictures so that I have like a digital copy and then throwing away the originals but then they I don't know I really like some of them. Ah, you see. <laughs> Initially, I was going to do the condo method with my paints. Then I was like, no, I'm not throwing any way. Um, or I'm not getting rid of any paints, really. Um, but what I did decide to do was kind of go through and create a donate pile. So things that, like, say, I... I don't use as much anymore I haven't used in a long time or I didn't particularly like the paper or whatever so I'll donate that to charity so that at least someone can can use it and most of it is like quite beginner stuff so it's not even like um it's not necessarily uh, expensive Yeah.
yeah see that's the thing I don't know it's just like I used to have I used to draw and paint a lot well I didn't used to paint I used to draw quite a lot when I was younger so I'm like oh all those drawings like there are some that I remember that I'm like oh you know I wish I could see them but then I'm sure there's equally plenty that I wouldn't have known what to do (laughs) what to do with if I still had it Here's a moodier bouquet. <laughs> mm, so you guys keep it. Yeah, my current system, <laughs> it's just not legit. My current system is that if it's like big, bigger sheets like this, I put them into the, I mean, it's easier to show you than to explain. So this is the watercolour paper that I'm using at the moment. Um, And I got it because it was like super cheap. I think it was 100 sheets for £15. Um, So I thought it would be very good practice paper. And to be honest, it's working out. I think I was judging it a bit too harshly. So for example, this piece will go in here. Like I just stuffed them all in here. (laughs) And the bigger ones go into whichever pad it came from. Everything just goes back into the pad that they came from. Which um, isn't necessarily the best way to do things. Just swatching out the colours again. So the first one is permanent alizarin crimson, again, because I'm trying to use it a bit more. The second one is mineral violet. And then we have hooker's green again. And then we have hooker's green with Payne's gray. Yeah, giving it away has made like helped me feel better. It's it's a lot of stuff, like even canvases and stuff, because I was like, okay, it's a lot to carry. <laughs> um permanent alizarin crimson mineral violet. Hooker's green and this one is Hooker's green plus Payne's grey and these are all Roman small Quite similar. I think I prefer it with the Payne's Grey than with the Shadow Violet. Note to self. Yeah. (laughs) I guess it makes sense that um, a portfolio would be neater (laughs) than just stuffing it back into the pad. Yeah, this is the tricky thing. So the most of the supplies that I'm giving away are things that I don't like I don't I didn't enjoy using, so I I wouldn't go back to. Um but I am like aware of everything else I'm keeping. So for example, there are some gouache brands that I used that I just didn't like. Um and I think there are some I have quite a lot 
of the brands that I do like. So that I was happy to give away um, quite a few of acrylics. I have, I have like a set of good quality acrylics, but then others I haven't, I have a few. I'm looking at the pile. I'm looking over there because it's over there. So I'm trying to figure out what's in there. Yeah. yeah <laughs> I can't believe like my so that the pads is one um one kind of system the other system is um even more ridiculous and that's that I have a box and I just put everything inside that box <laughs> which is not legit um I want to do another design, like another floral, but I'm thinking like a round one, just because I know that in my last video I did a bouquet. Um, so I thought it would be nice to show you how I do the other kind of, um, let me use my words, how I do the other kind of bouquet designs or floral arrangements or floral designs. I wonder which colours we should use. I want it vibrant. Oh no, I'm sorry you regret it. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I I like that my I feel like I should love working in acrylics and yet for some reason I do it and it's okay, but I wouldn't say it's like what, um, I wouldn't say it's like my go-to. Oranges and peach colours. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'll go for it. Shall we try some Pyrrol Red? I feel like I don't use my reds enough. I always kind of like shy away from them. Um... I know, I know you badly regret, I know, I figured the badly meant regret it. It's just hard to carry everything. But one thing, I, I, I tried to do the Marie Kondo method with um, my watercolours and I was like, this is, this is not, <laughs> this is not working. Everything is bringing me joy. <laughs> I want all these supplies. <laughs> it felt like I was doing another haul myself. Like, you know, I mean, oh, this is not. I got distracted and I started doing something else, but it's okay. We can we can fix it. I was like, wait, that's not how I start circles, but it can be. <laughs> um, yeah, everything was bringing me joy, so I was like, ah. Uh. Um, and then I have quite a few canvases. Some are cheap, so I'm giving away some of the cheap ones. I'm keeping the the bigger like expensive ones and also like I've realized I'm super sentimental like my goodness I find it so hard to give away anything that was given to me bought for me so um pretty much um like I have some canvases that my mum got me that I'm gonna keep <laughs> um and she's very much a big believer of like good quality things so they're really nice canvases and I think they'll be nice, like, oh, I long for the day that I'll, like, be settled. And when I am settled somewhere, um, I'll be able to, like, do a big piece and then actually hang it up. Which would be nice. I think that red is too strong. Now let's do a peach. Mm. 
going this way. Hey, Jen. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I must say it's nice. It's the only thing that's kind of helped me with letting go. And not just art supplies. I mean, like, clothes as well, bags, shoes, everything. I've kind of pretty much been like, okay, well, if I haven't used it, there could be someone who needs it, who would love it, who would use it straight away. And I'm not doing it any favours by just... leaving it to the side but obviously I can't go wild with it because as Mrs Barnabas very helpfully pointed out everything is so expensive now <laughs> so I feel like anything I'm getting is um anything I'm giving it's with the idea that it's something I do not need right so I won't I won't need to buy another one in a few months. It's something I don't need. It's a luxury that I can learn to live without. Yeah, I agree. And I've been super lucky. I've had so many like art gifts recently and not just from companies and brands, but also from viewers. Like, <laughs> I'm genuinely so happy and in awe and like, yeah. Like, I still can't believe it, you know, when you're like, oh, people are so nice to me <laughs> why are people so generous like um I have another video that's coming up soon that will be um gifts from Sherry like she went out of her way to send an amazing package I feel like my video won't do it justice but again she was like yeah um use it <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much no but still it's uh it's very humbling you know because you I, I didn't know what youtube was going to be like um or just in general like i don't even mean it's not necessarily about the gifts although they are amazing it's just to know that someone would be so kind you know i'm very fortunate yeah, there's quite a few, um, um, quite a few, uh, what's the word, like charity shops near me. Um, one is for like age concern, which is for senior citizens. Um, there's cancer research as well. There's five on my high street. So I will make the rounds. Like I even have a printer, which... I don't know because I have two printers I'm like okay give one away <laughs> why do I have two printers because one wasn't really working and um, as in my old one wasn't really working and then I also thought that I wanted to, I really wanted to do art prints and make my own cards and make um, like planners as well you know desk planners and everything um, and I thought that a good way to do that would be to make them myself and to print them at home myself for my Etsy store and just in general then what happened <laughs> so for that reason I felt like um, so I wanted to a printer that could print thicker card um, and I saw that there was an Epson printer that could do that and thus I bought the Epson printer and sadly it just can't print anything it can't print on thin paper it can't print on thick paper it can't do anything um 
and I've spent so much money on inks and everything trying to fix it and the company were really nice in terms of like they sent me a replace they sent me like two replacements um like exchanges you know and each time they sent me an exchange there was something wrong with the new printer which always meant it couldn't print. So it was either that it couldn't print on thick card or um, the colours were off. The one that I currently have, it it prints everything in pink. Um, but because everyone else has said it's really good and I still have it, I kind of feel like... That's not the one I'm giving away. <laughs> um, I kind of feel like there must be some sort of simple solution. And then once I know it, um, it will work and I'll be able to print everything and anything again like I made so many um designs for planners some of which I gave free like you know the goal planner that I did I just like doing those kind of things and I thought um so that's why I have two printers and I'm giving away the other one because the Ink was expensive and it doesn't print what I would want. It, it can only print like normal paper. So it wouldn't necessarily serve me even if, um, yeah, I need something that can print thicker paper and print photos. And this is like a normal printer, which someone else can make use of yeah I know this is the thing right Epsom is meant to be so good and I watched so many reviews and everyone was saying oh yeah this is amazing and then even when I spoke to Epsom at the time they were also confused and were like no this is not right I sent them pictures and they were, were like very good about replacing it and each one just had either one recurring issue was um like a line going through the prints like a or it would either be like say a dark line going through the prints like an inch apart or it would be no ink like an inch apart and I did all the like resetting things still wouldn't work and then this last one was the worst of them all but by this point they'd already replaced it twice um so there was nothing more that they could do and this one just prints in pink doesn't print black or white just prints in pink and gray um so I'm not sure part of me is wondering like oh is it a wire is it where it's located is it because it's connected through wi-fi I just need to really dedicate some time to troubleshooting it um because I think it's even like the one that mini small uses as well um and I look and I see all the things that other people can do with it. And I'm like, I can't even print a normal A4 piece of paper. <laughs> but I'm keeping hope alive. This one didn't initially start how I had planned out because normally I start here and then I can see the cycle in my head and I started here and I was like, huh, how's this angle going to work? And not only did I start here, I started here and I started wide. So it would have been like a massive circle, but I think it's actually worked out nice. Can you see the C? So quite sometimes I do something like that and then I can put something there like a name or happy birthday or something to that effect. Mm. oh yeah colors again hmm this one's mm, okay this one we used pyrrol red and i don't normally use reds so this is a 
a new one for me. Just want to make it lighter so I can see that I wasn't lying to myself because otherwise when I look back on it, I'll say it doesn't look like that. <laughs> Thank you. And I recently came back from a wedding, actually. That's what I went to uh, Malta for. Not my own, but... <laughs> but a beautiful wedding, nonetheless. Um, then this is Permanent Crimson and quinacridone gold I'm gonna end up finishing this quinacridone gold it's already like getting a dip in it but it's so pretty And we, if I do that here, then we'll know it's these two mixed together. And hooker's green, which to me, I'm not going to lie, it looks so much like sap green. I think it's why I liked it, to be honest. <laughs> That's why I got it. Completely disregarded the name. And then thank you so much and thank you for the suggestion, Colleen. And this is Mm. <laughs> uh, this is all Roman small again. And it is pyro red. Permanent alizarin crimson and quinacridone gold here. Then hookers green and then we have hookers green and panes grey cool and then I think I'll do one last one and then call it a night <laughs> so these are the ones we've done so far Whoops. Ta da. These are quite similar. <laughs> hey, welcome. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much, Helen. Mm. Last but not least, what should we do? I want to do like a dark moody red. But I feel like every time I try to do it, I get a red that I don't like. Um, like I want a dark maroon. Let's see. <laughs> don't worry, you're not late. Welcome. <laughs> I give zero notice. I wonder what else is in here. Oh yeah, you see. 
other. I don't think we did these together. These. Can you see these? Uh, oh, I was doing paint pouring and me trying to be a cheapskate. <laughs> it's on the back of um, a cereal box. So <laughs> all my, but they like, even my other favorite one, it's a blue one. It's in the box that I was referencing earlier. And it's so nice. Again, on the back of a cereal box. Um. Oh, good night. Oh my gosh, one thirty. Sorry. <laughs> Sleep well. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, but I still remember it's you, um, Helen. Shall we? Okay, I'm gonna try and do the moody, the moody red that I have in my head. It may end up being a color I hate, but if it is, that's okay. We'll do main gray. <laughs> but still, I need to be. Uh, I don't know. I think I'll start varying the times of my live stream and just do them. Well, I guess I already do them all at random times, but they tend to be quite late our time. So I'll, I'll start doing them a little bit earlier. Sleep well. I once wanted to do like a uh, all day live stream kind of thing. It's like, oh, next time I'm going to paint, like, all day, I'll just live stream the whole thing so that we can all hang out throughout the day. You can hop in and out as you please. Um, I may do it. Part of me was wondering if it'd be boring, though. <laughs> as in, yeah. Because I'd need to take breaks and I'd be like, oh. We'd eat together. <laughs> would that be fun i think it'd be fun it'd be like a sleepover this is not the moody red i was referencing but i feel like seeing as this will be the starting point thanks helen maybe i will yeah i've been thinking let me add a little bit of paint gray see what happens whoa Let's see, is this the colour that we want? Let's do a rose. In... No. <laughs> it's not bad, but it's... Mm, is it? As in, it's not bad, but is it the colour that I wanted? I'm not sure. Helen, what time is it with you? What time is it over where you're at? Because for me, it's currently midnight <laughs> yeah exactly I wanted to do I did like I was I did a marathon um painting session on for my birthday that was four and a half hours um but I kind of want to do longer <laughs> I think maybe this mm, this color is growing on me feel like we're close oh <laughs> uh, so far enough do it in the evening as opposed to <laughs> in the middle of the night <laughs> that is very legit and actually I think doable like you know, um, when I first, my very first live stream, it took me like an hour and a half, two hours to set up beforehand, like just getting all the logistics of setting up the mic, getting two cameras, getting the lighting, like, yeah. Whereas this time only took me 20 minutes. So we're heading in the right direction. 
Um, and I think I was just procrastinating, hence why I started so late. And quite often I make the decision to go live quite late, as in, you know, half an hour before I am go live. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go live today. Because <laughs> I think otherwise I'll get too, um, I don't know if it's like nervous. Maybe it is nerves. Oh, thank you. Don't normally, hold on, let's do this side. Oh, I said I was gonna do a bouquet, didn't I? This is what I mean by no planning, literally no planning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no sorry it's I I just went live I decided at maybe 11 no tell a lie I decided maybe at 10 that I was going to go live and then I was doing something else and lost track of time realized the time was still like I still want to go live so and at this point it was 11 10 so I just started setting it up and then went live straight away so there was no notification no one but me myself and I knew that this was going to happen and I think I like it that way like I, it doesn't make sense but I like it that way I think because then I feel like the people who join are um like M MVPs like I'm worried I don't know I don't want I like that I recognize everyone who's kind of joining and that we can chat and obviously everyone's welcome but I think if I start if I do it too early I start overthinking it I think this is called um nerves yes <laughs> I get nervous so I give myself as little time to prepare as possible Or as little time to worry as possible because what a contrast from the other pieces, eh? <laughs> Thank you so much, Colleen. Very much so, Helen. <laughs> uh add some wonder um Colleen is there a special occasion for the gift for your daughter or did you just feel like it kind of want to add well I regret it
I see. That makes sense. I'm, I can honestly say I've never painted dogs. Last year, one of my um, goals for 2020 was to paint animals. Um, I think I painted two, <laughs> which is terrible. Like half, maybe like a month into the year, I just completely forgot that was a goal. And I think I got really more into florals and urban sketching and my art just took a completely different direction to what I thought it was going to. Oh, does this look like a heart to you? Unintentional, but... Do you see it? <laughs> I didn't realize but when I looked up at the screen I was like wait why why is it a heart a heart with moody reds looks like I'm going through some sort of heartbreak I have not tried them yet let me Swatch these out again. Pain's gray. That's not what I wanted to do. Here we go. Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, heart completely. That's funny. And yeah, only used two colors for this one which were the infamous permanent alizarin crimson and Payne's grey ta da <laughs> <laughs> so the still wet. So today we did this one, the heart, and the circle. Did we do this today? Yes, we did this with the moody purples. Don't like that one as much, so I'll put it underneath this one. <laughs> and this one. Do you have a favourite? <laughs> Out of curiosity. Favourites are always like... Um, the the ones that tend to be my favorites are quite often not the favorites of anyone else <laughs> which which is fine for me because i feel like if there's something that i don't like that people really like i'll start liking it a little bit more but if i like something and nobody else likes it that's fine i won't like it any less um so should we say top left top right bottom right bottom left which one's everyone's favorite the first is your favorite as in the first we did this one ah this one 
all of them. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I really, really like Gremlin Schmoll. And I think one of the reasons that I keep using them in these um, live streams is that they're just a bit more affordable. So I can, I feel like I can play with them quite a lot. Um, and they're full pans. I just feel like when I can see like there's so much paint and I keep painting so much and it's not even like making a true dent in it. I feel like I can be free with the paints and not worry about wasting or anything like that. I can just experiment more. So this one is the favorite. Oh, these two are the favorites. And top left, this one. <laughs> yeah, everyone has it. Yeah, I must say this one. I, mm, mm, do I... Is that another heart? No, it's not. It's like, is it? No, it's not. Um, this one is okay-ish, but which one is my favorite? I think. I think it's between. I like the color scheme in this one, but I think it's between this and. I like these three. This one I don't mind as much, but I'm like, I'm cool without it. But these three. I think from this, I'm like, I don't like mixing mineral violet with permanent alizarin crimson. I don't like the color that it makes. I think it's like a muddy purple. So I think that's what's distracting me from this. This one, I just like how like nice and peaceful it is. I love the color scheme in this one, although I think the composition is more interesting in this one. And I kind of, I'm kind of feeling the heart vibe like here, even though it was a complete accident. Um, I like the the juxtaposition of it being a heart but it also being so moody and dark oh you prefer the upper right because you prefer the warm colors ha ah, lower left they're all great <laughs> i think that's the conclusion i keep going back and forth um the paper that i'm using is this here i can link it down below once um the live stream ends it's the gold line claire fontaine watercolor paper it's 100 sheets it's the paper size is 24 centimeters by 32 centimeters so it's slightly bigger than a slightly bigger than a4 or letter size but it was really cheap that's why i got it um <clears throat> i will only use it for practice though because although i think i was being harsh on it and it's actually worked quite nicely i don't like the uniform texture on the paper like i like when the cold price is a bit more unpredictable and i feel like can you see it on here if you look can you see these are this is when i was swatching the new color twos can you see the pattern of the paper like how it's so uniform because of I don't really like that <laughs> I don't know if it makes sense it's a hundred sheets sorry the pack is a hundred sheets for at the time it was 15 pounds but it's quite it's quite cheap that's why I got it because I just wanted I couldn't find any of my De La Rani paper it's actually cheaper than my De La Rani paper so that's why I got it I know <laughs> temple welcome <laughs> yeah 100 sheets it was super super cheap. it was definitely under 20 pounds I think most it would have been it must have been around 15 15 16 pounds because I was looking for something nice and cheap and when I bought my jumbo set of De La Rally it was 50 sheets for eight pounds and I haven't seen a deal like that since I don't know if they mislabeled I don't know what happened but since then it's kind of been more expensive and someone mentioned that Claire Fontaine paper was quite nice which is why I got it but yeah it's it's like my practice paper I don't know how it works in terms of like you'll notice that when I do my paintings they have hey Tony oh yeah 100 sheets cowling um you know cowling you must be near me um welcome temple when welcome Tony yeah um it's just my practice. I don't know how it works with lifting. I don't know how it works with layering. A lot of when I do watercolor florals, I don't do any of those things. It's just very much like simple, put the paint there, leave it there, it's done. So I don't know how it is in terms of that kind of practice. Um, but I was pretty determined to use it for 
for practice. Hence why I'm like, oh, it's not finished pieces. Look, I'm writing notes on the side. <laughs> I feel like a real artery. Uh, real artery. I feel like a real artist. I went to Canterbury um, last week. I didn't know they had a carling there. Um, I'm kind of curious. Um, whoops. Okay. Uh, which colours do you guys think lift well? Shall we do a few things? And some Payne's grey. <laughs> Next time, Helen. I was saying part of like, um, as well as having a Kofi, who was I talking to? Maybe Sarah? Sarah Burns? I can't remember. I was talking to someone about how another thing that I would love to do. Oh, it was Miss Ebony. Um would be to literally like have an MVP meet up. I mean, literally just hang out for a weekend, rent somewhere, paint, chill. I have big dreams, ladies and gentlemen, if there are any gentlemen here. <laughs> Very big dreams. Uh, well, I'm just doing this so that I can see if I can lift it and see... Do you have any other questions about the paper? And then I can test it out now so that at least you have them. And if you want to get the paper, you can. If you don't want to get the paper, you don't have to. It's not the same as a proper review, but. Uh... My good old trusty ocean blue. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't know which colours lift well versus which ones don't out of these. So I don't want... Um... Want to be able to tell the difference between what is because of the paint and what is because of the paper. Mm. Although I don't really tend to lift, but I do tend to layer. But that would be that would be for another time. I think maybe one day I'll try to do like a, a landscape on this paper and then I'll layer then and then we'll know if it like all turns to mud if it can only take two layers or if it actually works out quite nice I got carried away with the water that I added to the swatches but it's because some of them granulate so nicely <laughs> and while we wait for these to dry does anyone have any questions about the Kofi so far, I've already released the first challenge, which took me hours to come up with. Um, I just wanted it to be something that's fun, but also like can apply to everyone because we all seem to like different um, different mediums. We like different subjects. And I love that. I absolutely love that we all do those things. So I'm like trying to figure out, OK, what challenge can I do that someone who loves pastels and someone who loves watercolours and someone who loves landscapes, but someone who also loves portraits can do? <laughs> um, so I have quite a few exciting ideas coming up, but the first one is out. And I also um, I want to release like reference photos or references in general as inspiration every month because I feel like that's something that can be a bit tricky sometimes and sometimes it's just nice to be like okay this is what I'm going to paint or this is what someone's going to paint um, 
feel free to use it as a reference. So I'll be doing those as well. And for this month, it's the um, some of the pictures that I took from Venice. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So that's on there as well. And then the I've also put on the Peony Guide, which was basically a free guide that I created for anyone who wants to be able to um, draw the peonies that I draw, not the ones that I paint. And it's available for free on Etsy as well and available for free. If you look on the links of my videos, it's also there as well. Um, but I also put it on there. I just like making these things, you know, guides, planners, the whole works is on there. And um, we've started a Discord. Um, so honestly, before this whole YouTube thing, I used to be like somewhat okay with technology, but I feel like as I've got older, especially over the five past five years, I've just disconnected from um technology so it's been quite interesting getting back into it with youtube and streaming and discord and everything else let me see some of the questions um <laughs> yeah definitely join definitely join i have linked it down below already and i want yeah i want it to be like a peaceful escape and inspiration and like a fun nice community and i think we have quite a good community on here already. And this will just be a way for us to actually be able to interact at times that isn't necessary. Like at the moment we can only interact when I release a video or when I do a live stream or when I do a premiere, this will offer some freedom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it can be done on iPhone. So the way that it works actually is that Kofi itself is like the, um, Kofi itself is like the platform like Patreon. So Kofi is where you would join up and um and sign up. And on Kofi, like the website itself, you would have access to any updates I put, my gallery and um my shop, which is where I've put the free resources there as well. And then everything else um would be on the Discord and you get access to the Discord once you sign up to the Kofi, if that makes sense. So once you sign up to the membership you get access to the discord and that's a separate platform where you um how do i describe it it's a separate platform that has um almost like titled chats so you can go in each chat and talk <laughs> basically i don't know if i can can i um, wonder if i can share the screen So for example, on there, I've created like a um, a page for our art challenge. I've created a page for us to chat in general, not, can you see me? Uh oh. Oh yeah, you can still see me. <laughs> Sorry, it was acting as if it was frozen. <clears throat> okay, yeah, good. I'm glad it makes sense. I was gonna try and share the um the screen, but let's see. Uh want it to be private. Share screen, share screen. Chrome tab, Discord. Okay, can you see the Discord? <laughs> this could either be really good or, <laughs> or not, but <laughs> just to show you how it works very quickly and I'll probably edit all this out <laughs> after, as in, um, it won't be on the replay probably um but yeah this here is my server which is basically the group that I've created for us and on here is like the welcome the announcements then this section here is exclusive just for people in Kofi so for example you can go on here and introduce yourself or you can submit things for the art challenge or you can make suggestions um, of things that you want to do or you can share your art or the last one I won't click on because that's actually so that we can um, 
live so that we can video chat um, or Zoom call. And then I have some others that I've created. So this is where I'll share the photo references and more. But you get access to all that once you... Um, oh, you can see me. You get access to all that once you go on um, Kofi. <laughs> Good. I'm glad it makes sense. <laughs> Thank you so much. I don't even know how to. Oh, let's stop share. <laughs> it's like I don't know how to stop sharing a screen. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions? Um, but yeah, I'm super excited, and I think at the moment it's like very early days. I'm doing an offer which I haven't mentioned in this entire live stream. My bad. And that's basically that I've done 25% off um, for this week. So everyone who starts off and as in we only have a few days left until until Sunday, it'll be 25% off. And that 25% off will last the entire, like as long as you're a member. So it won't just be for the, this month, it will be for as long as you want it. And after that, it will be um, full price. And the reason that I only, so normally when people have Patreons that do multiple tiers, and I was speaking to my brother about it, as you guys know, I speak to my family a lot. <laughs> and I was speaking to them about it to, um, just try and figure out what's the best way to make it helpful. And one thing that he pointed out was just like, find out what people want first. And also that I think I was getting so caught up in the details and I didn't want to exclude some people from getting some rewards. And this is, this was like the easiest way that I could think of in my head. Let me try to do some lifting on this paper for anyone who does that and let me know if there's any other test that you want on this paper but it's cold pressed 100 sheets and picked I happen to have picked very staining colors <laughs> yeah it will only be my practice paper but It's not in my donate pile, let's just put it that way. Ooh. Okay, so Quinn Gold should lift. <laughs> just in case you were interested and I think at some point I'll do a landscape on it so that I can see how it layers but yeah my main qualm with it was just and in terms of buckling it does buckle that's never like been something to bother me like can you see the indents so it does buckle quite a bit um yeah it lifts it does lift quite well as well um so it does buckle quite a bit but buckling doesn't tend to bother me much um um nor does warping but if that's something that bothers you I did put quite a bit of water but you can see that that's quite a lot compared to some other brands it is what GSM I think it's ah oh, it's 200 GSM so that might be why it's it's slightly lighter 100 sheets cold pressed and you can see the texture a bit more um and it's not just for sorry i didn't i don't even think i answered your question colleen did i um it's not just for iphone or computer the kofi you can access it through web browser yeah you can access it through web browser um on your phone or on your computer but it doesn't come with an app but Discord does come with an app. So it's on both. Can you see that? 
And that's pretty much it, folks. <laughs> Thank you so much, as always. Yeah, no, I hate blooms. I, I hate blooms um, with a passion. Did these bloom? I think it's I think it's harder to get water control on this. But I don't think I got that many blooms. But some some backgrounds. I'll leave it on our heart. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I am releasing a video tomorrow. Um, so look out for that. And the discount on the Kofi will be on there for the next now two days. So if you're interested in joining, please feel free to check that out. If you just want to tip um, to continue to support the channel, that's again amazing. If you just want to continue to watch for free, that's again amazing. I just really appreciate you being here. So thank you so, so much. Have a lovely weekend. Bye. Bye Temple. Bye Helen. Bye Matty. Bye Colleen. <laughs> Bye Mary Louise. Bye Anwar. I don't know who else is still here. Bye Tony. Good night.